Did you know that Jesus time traveled? Did you know that the Bible has secret hidden meanings to Greek words or portions of Greek words, allowing us to travel back in time and even to the future to pull things into the now? What if I told you that the bloodline curses that you have in your family, health, the sicknesses you have, even demonic entities that that are attached to your hundreds of years old bloodline potentially could be broken by time travel and that communion had the power to propel you into the past or the future? you would likely think that I have fallen and bumped my head, wouldn't you? And you would likely think that I have been watching too much sci-fi or maybe Marty McFly and Doc Brown and Back to the Future. I know as a side note, just because I grew up in the 80s and actually enjoyed Back to the Future and also Quantum Leap from time to time doesn't mean that I was watching sci-fi or Marty McFly. No, actually... I was listening to some recent teachings, and don't worry, I'm actually not going to tell you that you can time travel, but today we will hear this teaching, and we will be going back to scripture and to helpful resources in checking the beliefs and the teachings of what's going on here when people profess that there is such a thing as Christian time travel. Hi there, and welcome to the Love Six Scribe podcast, where we talk about biblical truths, current topics, and where we grow in loving the Word and loving the one who is the Word, Jesus Christ. I am Dawn Hill, and I am the Love Six Scribe. Agnes Sanford once wrote in her book, The Healing Gifts of the Holy Spirit, quote, In the larger world, the heavenly kingdom, time is telescoped. We are no longer under its dominion. Therefore, when it is good, when it has a purpose, God allows us to see both before and after what we call time. We can enter into the accumulated thought vibrations of the ages and feel the feelings and think the thoughts of someone who lived long ago. Many take this as proof of reincarnation, but I do not so consider it. It is something both more simple and also more profound. We do not need to live again and again in time, for we live presently in all time if we did but know it. The vistas of prayer that this opens stagger the imagination. Can we send our prayer power back through time? Is this what Jesus did when he descended into hell and prayed for the spirits who were imprisoned in the time of Noah? Is this to come down to something nearer to our experience, the explanation of the prayer for the healing of the memories? How much greater are we than we have ever known? That, my friends, was written in 1966 by Agnes Sanford, who I have spoken about before on another episode about inner healing. She is the pioneer of inner healing. And you may be wondering why I'm bringing her up. Well, this quote actually came to mind. I remember reading this in, in her book when I was doing research on this. And this is part of inner healing is that they believe that you can travel back in time to memories, depending on which people you talk to about it, which I'm going to do a future podcast about Sozo and go in much more detail about it. But there is a a healing of memories, a visualization of Jesus and taking Jesus, asking Jesus, inviting Jesus back into your memories. Now, it's a little bit different, but I wanted to I wanted to mention that here because when I read it, it, um, it seemed like this is kind of going along with this, the soul healing or inner healing when you hear some of these people today in the hyper charismatic NAR circles talk about time travel. I never thought I would be talking about time travel on this podcast. Yet here we are. And it may seem that teaching on this is slim pickings, but it is more prevalent in the hyper charismatic than you might think. My guest says Jesus is the original time traveler. Time travel is real. And he has proof. I'm here with Troy Brewer in uh, Troy. Uh, you get into controversial teaching. God gets you in trouble all the time, doesn't he? He does. Yes, sir, he does. Okay, you say time travel was created by God, and there, there's a background from the Bible that most people have missed. Explain that. Great Scott! And that's what I saw in heaven, is, is it's not just you, it's a whole generation. You're supposed to be a history maker. You're supposed to affect the environment around you so that other people see the power of God in your life and they want to become a Christian. And, and that's what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be displaying his power and, and have confidence in the word of God. And, and so you can change history with your life. You can change the future. Did you know that? When you go to prayer and you go into the, the spirit, 
you are in the timeless realm and you through prayer can seal up your future as well. You can thank God ahead of time that you're going to succeed in all the things he has for you. And I, I've gone into, into the future and changed history because I saw that if, if things were left the way they were, that the, this generation was going to fall short of what God called them to be. So all the Christians on the earth right now, I saw that there needs to be a huge deluge of the spirit of God, a huge dose of the heavenly realm. There has to be the glory of God coming into the meetings and all of the programs. I saw that I need to go ahead and release that. I need to yield to the spirit and let the fire from the altar come forth. I saw that I can change history. And I saw that many, many Christians will change history because they're catching this message that really it's rigged in your favor. Yes, these teachings are out there. And they are taught by people that have a massive following. They have a lot of people listening to them. And they have their undivided attention. And they love this teaching. And so we're going to be listening to someone particularly today, though, named Katie Souza. You may or may not be familiar with her. But she says that she is a revivalist and that she is a minister. And so she goes around and has her own TV show and, and such. But she has been interviewed a couple of times about this particular topic. She was interviewed by Patricia King a few years ago. And I think it was around that same time in 2019 that she was interviewed also by Robert Hodgkin. And we're going to look at these interviews today and look at the clips from these to try to see what is being taught, if it matches up with what scripture says, even what the Greek she's ascribing to say that it means. And again, I don't know Greek. I'm not a Greek scholar, but I can share with you a little bit of it. And then from there, I would direct you to someone that actually has education in the Greek understanding in in biblical studies. As always, I want you to go back and really have biblical discernment understand what is being taught and if you should even be listening to this teaching as far as accepting it as a sound biblical teaching, which I'm going to argue that no, it's not. So let's travel back in time to 2019 to this interview with Patricia King. And it, they're talking again about time travel. This is on God TV. And they're basically going to segue in from saying, you know, that there's a counterfeit and there's a real and that the source is key. And the segueing into time travel to say that this is something that God wants us to do, that Jesus did it, and we need to be doing it as his disciples. So let's see what she has to say. Back into time. He did. He went back to the place, too, because time and space are linked together. That's to scientific, place. right? And he went back to the cause and he went that back made to the it cause. happen. Right. Now, that's, <laughs> where is that in the Bible? Okay, well, there's many proofs, and just a couple is in Mark 3, the man with the withered hand. Yeah. Okay, he's got a withered hand, and the Amplified says it's from an accident or a disease that happened in the past. Okay, so he tells the man, stand up. He says, stretch forth thine hand. He gives him a command, and he said he stretched it forth, and the hand was completely restored. So how did Jesus do that miracle? Well, the phrase there, stretch forth, is the Greek word ektano, and in it, it means the time something happened, the place something happened, and the cause that made it happen. So when Jesus said that command, stretch forth thine hand, he went back to the time the man's hand got withered, the accident or the disease, the place place it got withered, and the cause, the accident or the disease, that made it get withered, and he healed it right at the root. And of course, that all happened in a moment of time, like, you know, in, in, in fact, in the kingdom, things aren't measured by time. Right. So it's not like Jesus was saying, okay, I'm going to right now yes. go back into time. I'm going to go back to the place. I'm, it was just like happening as a as a miracle through time travel that is like that. Yes, he's and bringing the restoration. Yes, he's accessing the eternal exactly. realm. And we have the right to do that too because we are seated in heavenly realms with Christ and we are citizens of heaven. Yeah. Do we really have that power, that authority to access the eternal realm and to time travel? Do we have that same access? He did his past tense, so we're already there. We're able to access eternity. And he accessed eternity where all time and all locations in space are located. He did that even to deliver people of demons. Remember the man in uh, Mark 1? He's in the synagogue. He meets up with a man that's demonized. He speaks to the demon that's in that man. He says, come out. Come out of that man. Well, that phrase, come out, is the exact same phrase as stretch stretch forth. forth. It's ectano. Actually, it's not. And I would encourage you to look at that. And I can tell you that for certainty, even though um, I don't understand Greek, because I do have a lexicon. And I have taken time to look up words 
so I can have a little bit better understanding. Now, it does take me some time, (laughs) no pun intended, there's going to be some puns here today, but I do spend some time looking up some of these Greek words just for my own benefit and understanding, even when I'm doing my own Bible study on my own time. I had noticed when I went to go look this up in this particular passage, it is not the same Greek word. And so she's taking a portion of a word and she's saying that the entire word means that. Anyway, we'll get to that when we, when we cross that bridge. So she's making the the correlation here between Mark 3 and Mark 1, saying that when Jesus cast a demon out, that the same thing he did was saying, uh, come out. It was the same thing in Mark 3 as stretch forth. So as she goes on in this interview, she continues to talk about that. Uh, they talk about how nothing can restrain Jesus, that uh, the disciples did the same thing, and they begin to expound on Acts 4. So let's hear her talk about that just for a little bit. Nothing can restrain Jesus. No, nothing. And nothing can restrain us because we see in the scriptures right. that then the disciples did the same they did thing. The same they thing. did the same thing. In Acts 4, Peter is with the group of believers and he does a bold prayer. He comes before everyone and he, and he prays. He says, now Jesus, stretch forth yep, Ictano, Ictano. Right, your hand of power through us to do signs wonders and miracles so he was saying i saw you do all these time traveling miracles jesus now stretch forth ectano through us do it through us so we can go back to the time people's diseases came in them the place it came in them and the cause that made it happen put right at the root so we can see signs wonders and miracles yeah that is so interesting i want to do put a little practical application into effect right now so if you will turn with me to acts chapter 4 we're just going to read this passage together as lay people okay as lay christians as believers in christ if, if you're a believer in christ listening to this then i want you to get your bible and read along so she's talking about how peter was the one that did this powerful prayer and We're going to look at a couple of things that she said. So I want to look at that first. So when the believers gathered together after Peter and John were released from prison, in verse 23, it says, They went to their friends and reported what the chief priests and the elders had said to them. And when they heard it, they lifted their voices together to God. They lifted their voices together to God. It was not Peter praying by himself. It was the whole group of them praying. That may seem like a minor point, but she continues to emphasize that this is Peter doing it. It's the whole group. And they're praying together in one accord, and they're saying, Sovereign Lord, who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and everything in it, who through the mouth of our father David, your servant, said by the Holy Spirit, Why did the Gentiles rage and the people's plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his anointed. For truly in this city there were gathered together against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, along with the Gentiles and the peoples of Israel, to do whatever your hand and your plan had predestined to take. And now, Lord, look upon their threats and grant to your servants to continue to speak your word with all boldness, while you stretch out your hand to heal and signs and wonders are performed through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak the word of God with boldness which they were filled for and empowered for a work of service is what that word filled means there in that passage. Now, I want to point out a couple of things to you to consider. So when we read the full verse, again, Peter was not the only one that prayed this. It was all the believers together. And she said some phrasing that was really interesting to me. She said, through us, that your hand would be stretched out through us to heal. That's not what the passage says. And I looked up multiple translations of this. You know what translation I found this particular reference in, in through us in italics? It was in the Passion Translation. That's where I found it. And so just wanted to point a couple of things out there. She never says what reference it is, but I'm fairly confident that it's the Passion Translation, which is something that I would highly suggest that you not use um, as a Bible, as a source to study the Word of God at all, because it will confuse you. Katie goes on to talk about how she had an encounter with Jesus, um, that where an angel took her back in time to um, a family member that had a traumatic experience. And because of that traumatic experience that happened in Nazi Germany, that her father had 
suffered with some growths that had come upon his body. And so she was also having them come up on her body. And she was able through an angel to go back in time to Nazi Germany and to basically deal with this this issue and she uses the greek word now the greek word she uses which for the stretch forth that came out of mark three is the word ectano and you're going to hear her pronounce it a little different ectano but it's ectano and i double checked that from a few different sources that are able to pronounce greek and so when she's talking about this encounter with jesus she talks about going back in time that the growths fell off the day after because of her going back and doing time travel back to the place of where this entered into her her bloodline and she talks about services with time travel about healing all kinds of people and that she has proof of this they go on to talk about how moses time traveled and david time traveled and so because they're saying that it happened even though it doesn't say that in scripture but they're saying that this took place that we're able to do this too and even patricia king testifies of time travel when when she was late for a service and that she was translated it sounds like miraculously that she was an hour late and then she talks about some other things about time travel. As they go on, they continue to expound on that we are not confined by time because of Christ, that we can reach outside of time to do something. And they said that you can invite the Lord to go back into time to heal and bring a shift. Doesn't that sound like inner healing? It sure does. I mean, when you start looking at inner healing, it really has the the similarities of this and a little bit of the involvement Uh, if you will, of saying that, well, you can take Jesus back in time to your memories and you can heal the memories. You can even rewrite memories. I mean, Agnes Sanford said that. There's some people that may hold to that in some of the inner healing or sozo teachings or theophostic prayer that you can go back and that you can rewrite your memories and and you can change them because Jesus is there. And so they they don't even have to be what they once were. Again, it it sounds fiction because you can't do that. There's no way for us to do that. So now we're going to move on and listen to the interview that was done with Robert Hodgkin and Katie Souza that same year in 2019. And they're talking about Christian time travel. Now you're going to, there's some things that they say that are very similar. And um, there's certain uh, clips that I'm going to play today for us to listen to in order to get better understanding what they're talking about. And there were times that I was listening to them and it was just, again, just like last week when I was listening to Robin Bullock, there were many times that my head was spinning trying to listen to them because I don't want to jump to conclusions, but I'm going to make an observation here. There's sometimes with listening to some of these teachings that it's almost as if it's deliberately confusing. That way it's it's so muddy that people can't decipher and tease out what's going on here. It's like it's made to sound profound, but it's just gobbledygook. I mean, they're going around and they're saying these different things and they're weaving the scriptures in and out through all this, this teaching, this profound extra biblical revelation that they're trying to present to people. And uh, and oh, by the way, in addition to this, you can buy their products that talk about time travel. So that's really important too, that you purchase and, and that you give them finances so that you can learn more about something that's not actually taught in scripture. And so anyway, I I just found it very interesting and confusing again at the same time to listen to them. And again, God is not the author of confusion. If you want to understand what scripture says, you can plainly read it and then you can listen to solid biblical teachers that are going to tell you the right thing and they're not going to confuse you in such a way that you can't question what they're saying or that it's so deep and profound that you can't even understand it or fathom it. You should be able to read the word of God and to understand the gospel, to understand some core tenets of Christianity. And there may be things that you don't necessarily understand, but again, this is a teaching that is extra biblical. It's not found in scripture. It's reading beyond the text. It's reading into the text. It's reading things that aren't even in the text. And it's ascribing things to us that are concerning. In their interview in 2019 with Robert Hodgkin and Katie Souza, there was a two-part interview that Robert Hodgkin did with Katie Souza on his program. She was the first woman on his program to be interviewed, and it was called Christian Time Travel. And in this interview, they start off, they, they're they talking about uh, testifying of time travel and how we can access the eternal realm, which you heard that mentioned in the interview with Katie, with, with Patricia King. And during the initially during the interview they uh, when they're talking about this the eternal realm that you can actually go back in time and in even into the future so let's eavesdrop in and listen to what they have to say about time travel 
present tense. And that means everything of God in its fullness is ours in him and can be accessed. And everything includes being able to uh, go back in time That's to it. solve issues yep. and to go forward in time and to pull in promises that weren't are scheduled to happen for years, even decades, right into our now. The more you walk through this revelation, yeah. you know, for me, going back happened all the time. Right. I, I got it to where, you know, that was a regular visitation. This for was me. one of your teachings that I loved yeah, in the midst, where right. you started teaching about moving through time to see issues resolved. Oh, in yeah. Your life. And it was so, it was such, I, I locked myself in my bedroom for three months straight and got the revelation on what is that? How do you do it? How does it work? What, what propels you into that activation? Isn't it interesting who's highlighted here and who is being exalted? I mean, the focus is really on Katie and and her ability to lock herself in her room for three months straight. I don't believe that, first of all. I don't believe anybody would do that. I mean, you have responsibilities, you have family, you have other things to do. If you can lock yourself in a room for three months straight, and that's time that you could be spending actually understanding the Word of God much better and understanding how to grow in, in true biblical spiritual maturity. That's going to be far be- more beneficial. There's very much of a focus on self here about how spiritual they are. And you'll see this a lot. And it, again, this is not a direct thing, direct attack towards her, but you just see this in general. And I'm familiar with this in the movement. It's a false humility. And you you think that you're being humble. It's a humble brag and saying, oh, look how special I am because God actually talks to me and I hear his voice and, and I got this deep revelation. But we need to be focusing back on Christ. You know, and and God showed me through Revelation how to do it. And I was always, you know, going back to, you know, places in my past and times in my past where things came upon my bloodline, even thousands of years back. And and then when I would come back, I would know I would go because I would come back and I would be healed of a disease. Or, you know, something would manifest big, not just like, oh, that was a fun dream. It wasn't even like many times I actually went body, soul, spirit and everything back. And I would know I was doing that because. I would be, you know, thinking I was having a dream, but though I, in that dream I was feeling things, yeah. like I was touching, I could feel wind, I could feel movement, I could touch things, and I thought, wow, you know, I'm really here. Right. And then I would open my eyes, I'd say, well, if I open my eyes, I will know if I'm in my bed or not. Yeah. And then I'd open my eyes and I would not be in my bed, I would be in that place wow. I was seeing. So I knew, and the, you know, the, the Bible talks about us going everything, not just right. in the spirit, but right. body, soul, spirit, the whole package going. Right. I mean, Paul said, in the I went. he went into the third heaven, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know, he said it twice. Twice. Hey, Philip was transported. He was baptized in the Ethiopian eunuch. Right. And it says he completely disappeared and right. showed up in a town called Astos. So the whole package yep. went, you know. Uh, yeah, that's descriptive, not prescriptive. We're not told to do that. We're just told about it in scripture. Let's keep going. The Apostle John did it too. Yeah, and you know, the, the idea, I've been transported in the Spirit, and I've been yeah. translated in the Spirit. Yeah. And, you know, as you know, transfer right. our audience, transport in the Spirit is what you're saying. Yeah, Body, soul, thing. Spirit, the whole thing right. being physically moved from one right. place to another instantaneously. Mm-hmm. I've been translated in the Spirit where I have gone and ministered in different regions in of the, the world in the Spirit yes. while still being like in my Your home body in still being there. Or yes. it sometimes will happen to me in worship and meetings yes. in one place. I'll be translated in the Spirit to you minister get someplace else. away. But what you've been getting from God is yeah. not only that's moving through space. In yeah, the spirit, that's moving through space. But it's God not, has been showing yeah. you this accessing in the eternal realm for moving through time and both. They continue to go on and talk about how you can remain in the now while traveling in space and time. That you can go back to address a bloodline issue or a generational curse, even hundreds of years back. Did you catch that? Even thousands of years back is what Katie said. And Jesus, and they also say that Jesus models time travel as she did in the interview with Patricia King. And they also look at Mark 3 as they did in the other interview. And she focuses on part of the word ectano. And I want to look at this for just a minute as we talked about that. I did a brief study on this and I have a few resources I use, such as a Strong's Concordance. I also have the Old Testament and New Testament complete word study dictionaries that are very helpful. They expound on a Strong's Concordance. And then I do have a used BDAG which is, from my understanding, it's the gold standard of Greek lexicons for the New Testament. And the word ectano in the concordance, the number for it is 1614. And it means to stretch out, extend, as spoken of the hand, to stretch forth. 
Okay, that seems pretty straightforward. I also looked up the the first part of that word ek, and and it, the Greek number for it's in the Strong's Concordance is one five three seven. It means it is used in respect of place, time, and source. This is what she's doing, and you'll you'll hear her in a little bit t- mention this um, that she is focusing on the first part of that word, and so she's ascribing the entire meaning of that word based on the first bit of that, the first part of that word. I'm going to go on a limb here and say that that's not how Greek works in understanding it. I mean, again, I'm not a Greek scholar, but I'm going to venture to say as someone who at least took four years of Latin in high school, that that's not how understanding language works. You don't take part of a word and then make it mean the whole thing. That We don't do that with prefixes. We don't take a prefix of a word and basically say, well, that's the entire meaning of the word is the, is the prefix of the word. That's not how language works. So that's something you need to be aware of. That's what she's doing. And even when you look up in BDAG, the first part of that word, ek, when you look at the Greek portion of that, even in BDAG, it's at least two pages worth of understanding because depending on how it's used with a p- other part of a word in the Greek and where in the context that it's used, it's going to have a different meaning. So you cannot take the definition of Greek words and say, well, every Greek definition, every definition it has, that's, it means all those definitions. We don't do that in English either. So we don't, we're not going to do that in Greek. That's just something to consider. When I looked up Ectano in BDAG, the definition that fit with Mark 3, which it had Mark 3 listed underneath it, the definition was to cause an object to extend to its full length in space. And Mark 3, um, it had around it to hold out or extend the hands of a man with a disabled hand. There is no definition of time travel. This is something she has, has inserted into the text, she has inserted into her doctrine, her theology, that she can do this in the eternal realm, and she's not the only one. And sad to say, this is leading people astray. It's giving people a a false hope. It's leading them away from the Lord. It's leading them away from true biblical understanding, and people are chasing after myths is essentially what's happening here. This is not helpful to people. You may say, well, some people had actual healings. All of this has to be tested. I, for one, am someone who does believe that God still heals, that he does miracles. We can't force his hand to do it. We can't work them up and and conjure them up and whip them in a service as we see fit. Now, I will say this. I do believe that there are some explanations for why people feel like they're healed. I've seen people that claim to be healed in services I was in. And then uh, weeks later or several months later, they had to have surgery for the very thing they said was healed. Somebody might say that they lost their faith or they didn't believe or whatever. But the fact of the matter is there could be a natural reaction of endorphins, adrenaline, psychosomatic things can happen and such. Yes, God can still heal. But we also need to maybe ask, well, if we followed up with those people several months later, a year later, if this was truly a miraculous healing from God, which again, I do believe happens, then it's not something that's going to go away. We have to consider that. And so we we have to be willing to ask these questions without having the label of being uh, without faith or being a Pharisee or being religious or critical. These are fair questions to ask, let alone someone that is telling you you can time travel to get healed. She continues in her interview with Robert Hodgkin, and they go on later to say this. Me reminds you, and I know you know this. We, we believe this for sin. Yeah. When Jesus right. removes our sin, the blood doesn't just cover it up and make it, I, I don't see it anymore, I forget about it. It says removed as far as the east is from, from the west. west. It doesn't say covered up, it says removed, dealt with. Yes. So every sin throughout my life, when I said yes to Jesus Christ in the woods of yeah, Montana right. that day, 16 years ago, 15 yeah. and a half years ago, right. he moved throughout my my life, Your my bloodline, bloodline your time, and yeah. removed not just covered up, right. but removed every yes. sin. Yes. And that's moving throughout time. It is. We know how many times have we all prayed, you know, we decree that Jesus is going back all right. the way back right. to Adam. Right. What? <laughs> I had to listen to that part several times because I have never prayed that because I know what scripture says. Sin came from Adam 
And even as after we're born again, I mean, Romans 5 talks about this for crying out loud. Romans 5 talks about the fact that sin originated from Adam. Our flesh still has the capability to sin. In Romans 5, it talks about verse 12, therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sinned. For sin indeed was in the world before the law was given, but sin is not counted where there is no law. Yet death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sinning was not like the transgression of Adam, who was a type of the one who was to come. You cannot stop death. We die because of sin. There's no way to escape that because the flesh is going to die. Hebrews 9.27 says it is appointed once for a man to die and then comes judgment. You can't ectano that away. There's no possibility because sin is still present because of Adam. We still live in a fallen world and we are all going to die. And that is because of sin that came into the world. And, I, and I'm saying that as... And as loving as I can, but but when you're tell, it's frustrating to hear when people are being taught something that's not the truth, and we're not steering people back to the Word of God as we should be. Instead, we're steering them back to teachings that they should buy on DVDs and their books and stuff that are really not testifying of the truth. They're giving partial truths, and they may say some things here and there that are sprinkled in that sound like the truth or that are that there's truth to them. But there's some error here. We decree that Jesus is going back all the way back to Adam. Right. Okay, this is taking that prayer of faith that people have prayed, probably every Christian, through some time in their walk with the Lord. It's taking that simple prayer and putting crack on it. There you (laughs) go. Accelerating it, right? Yeah, it's totally accelerating it and taking it into a whole new dimension of power and authority. Because see, we can... Do you see what they just did there? And I don't even know their intentions. I don't know their heart behind this, but I picked it up when I was listening to that. It's like she just said, well, praying this type of way is putting crack on it. Can you consider how that's diminishing what Christ did to begin with, what he did on the cross? We cannot fathom with our finite minds what Christ did on the cross. I cannot fathom. The fullness of the penalty paid for me on the cross for my sin that I rightfully deserve the wrath of God. That in itself blows my mind. I don't need crack put on my prayer to make it more powerful or to have even more understanding or to mean something more and to try to obtain something more in order for me to be free. What Christ did on the cross was sufficient for me to be free. It was finished. And and this is the thing. This is the danger in, some of, in the teachings like this is that there's always this this constant need for more. It's never enough. It's never enough. It's never sufficient. There's always got to be more. There's always got to be some secret teaching, some hidden meaning behind these teachings that that God needs to reveal something in his word to us. There's always got to be more. Be careful of that. When it's, when it's going beyond the boundaries of what the word actually tells us and how we can understand it biblically, be careful of that. Katie Souza goes on to again talk about Acts 4, that's that it is an invitation for us to ectano ourselves, and that they talk later about this being used for encounter evangelism. That's not what they call it, but that's what it would be. They say going out on the streets and and helping the drug addict and such to be delivered from their addictions and for them to understand how they can be delivered from their past and that it can be healed and be rewritten and recreated and such. As they continue to go on, they are going to be praying at about the 34 minute mark in this first part of the broadcast. And here's what takes place. I just want to uh, first encourage you, you can do this. So now let's just start with a, a, a simple faith impartation. You know, Jesus lives in us. He's yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He's Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end. He created, according to Hebrews 1, the reaches of space and the ages of time. So that means that you have access to the reaches of space and the ages of time. So, so I'm just going to ask the Holy Spirit right now. Holy Spirit, I ask for every viewer that you would go visit them tonight with angels in tow, because there's so many time traveling angels, and that the Holy Spirit and those angels would go back to the time something happened in their bloodline that's causing them issues, the place or the location and space where it happened, and also to the cause that enabled it to happen and heal it at the root right now in the name of Jesus right now. Wow, I'm I'm getting hot. So I know that this is, it's got oil on it right now so that you would have visitation tonight 
in the name of Jesus, and that visitation would continue, that you'd replay this video, and it would continue, and you'd go to the next assignment, and continue and go to the next assignment, and even eventually go forward in time to a location and a, and a place where a promise is going to happen and bring it into your now. I have a question when I was thinking, when I was listening to this, and, and maybe you've had this question too. So I'm going to ask it on our behalf. I would like to know, based on, I've listened to a lot of different teachings from mass deliverance to uh, casting demons out of Christians to to healings and, of course, now time travel. And listening to all these, something occurred to me. I wondered why we can't give these recordings to all people to hear, and then they would all be healed and delivered. I mean, if these people have this much power, if there's that much anointing, she's saying she feels heat on her, so she knows that there's oil on what she's saying. I would like to know why, if these are so powerful, why is there a need to continue to make more books, more courses, more programs, have other people coming out saying they also time traveled and that you need to purchase their material and or do this and do that in order to have breakthrough in order. Why can't people just listen to the recordings on YouTube and get their healing? Why can't we just steer them in, in mass deliverance? She's saying that she can deliver people. Well, why can't we just send them to her? Why can't we just send them to this broadcast and they can just be ectanoed? Ec- why can't we do that? Because that's what she says. She ectanos people. Why? That doesn't sound pleasant, first of all. But why can't we just send them to the to YouTube, to the to the interwebs? Why can't we just send them to YouTube and have them watch this broadcast? Because she's saying if they, they listen to it over and over again, they'll have the healing and that they'll be able to have what they need from this. Those were questions that came to mind. But I guess the bigger question is, why isn't what Christ did sufficient? I guess that's the biggest question that we need to ask. Why isn't what Christ did sufficient? And it's because people are always looking for something new and something fresh. The squirrel with the shiny ball syndrome. I mean, we just want something new that we can listen to or that we can think about. So as we go on, they're going to go into part two. And what you'll hear in this part is they're going to focus on communion. And again, you may be wondering what communion has to do with time travel. And unfortunately, they're going to implement it in here I don't agree with what they're doing, but at, nevertheless, um, you're going to hear that Jesus, what Jesus did on the cross um, actually helped with time travel, that it opened what he did on the cross was intricate in in helping to open up the ability to time travel. That was very important for that. So as we go to part two in their interview with this about time travel and their discussion, um, she's going to talk about actanoing people and doing mass healing and deliverance. What, what Holy Spirit has been teaching you that Jesus taught yes. on and modeled is this idea of ectano, that when we declare something, that word actually moves throughout space and time, time. to go back to the root cause, yes. the root issue, the root occurrence, yes. to cut it off at the root. And so not heal. only do you have the healing, but it can't come back yeah. because everything that gave place to it's been removed oh, yes. back when it happened. Right. Okay. So and, and this is... Uh, this is not this is not biblical. This is not biblical. Please stop. I know we're just listening to it for evaluation, but just please understand that I want you to think about what what they're saying here and what and what's what's being stated and again who's being exalted and and is this any of this makes sense? And, and this produces this sounds so woo 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 you know Star Trekky. Yes, it does. Her charismatic craziness and all that, but it's it's a practical. Yes tool for real manifestation okay like i see huge miracles yeah it does sound woo 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 woo. i'm gonna agree with that and i'm gonna ask another question i mean why not go into hospitals and psychiatric wards and ectano everybody if she if she's able to do mass healings and mass deliverances to people that are coming to these corporate gatherings then why not go out like you're talking about and do this evangelism that you think is evangelism and go into hospitals and psychiatric wards and empty out the places and I, I, this is going to be a sensitive subject for people too i'm gonna bring this up real quick so we can move on but did anyone at Tano 2020 i mean if so we need to find out who the person was that brought what happened into 2020 and we need to have them unectano it is what we need to do we need to have this unectanoed i mean this is just nonsense It's really it really is and it puts people on this plane when they're talking about this and they're saying they're having these experiences and of course it it puts it on the level where they say where jesus showed them this so people aren't going to question it it puts this whole 
premise here that, you know, if I say Jesus said it or the Holy Spirit said it or God showed me or told me this, then you shouldn't question it. But we're told to test things. We're told to question and to use proper biblical discernment. And so I'm doing this out of love and concern for other people, including Katie Souza, including Robert Hodgkin, including Patricia King, including Troy Brewster, including Kevin Zadai, that are teaching these things. As we continue to listen on, they talk about accessing time in the realm of eternity and the reason why we couldn't always do this. This one is going to probably... Uh, blow your mind a little bit when you hear why they say that we haven't always been able to access the eternal realm. Now, we weren't always able to do that because in between us, this temporal realm and the eternal realm was a veil. The Bible talks about a veil. Okay. And it blocked us from ascending and it blocked us from being going up to be in the presence. So when was that veil first dealt with? Well, Jesus dealt with it for us yes. at the cross. Right, the veil was rent. The veil was rent. Veil now, was notice rent. it says the veil was rent in the temple from the top to the bottom. Right. So from the top where the eternal realm is, where all the reaches of space and the ages yeah. of time are, to the bottom to this temporal realm. And that is, that's a cornerstone of our belief. That means that Jesus removed the separation between us and God and gave us access to the holy of holies, the eternal realm, where we can go and travel. I will go up and then I will move in that realm back or forward, depending on where I need to go to Mm -hmm. take care of something. I just had a visitation myself. I mean, I do this all the time, a big one. I have them all the time, but I had a big one where I had an angel show up to help me go time traveling. And he said, uh, we're, we're going back to the cause. Remember, Jesus will go yep. back to the time something happened, the place something happened, and the cause. Okay. Yeah. So that's why the veil was torn, guys. Who knew that, you know, we needed the veil torn because we needed to access the eternal realm so we could time travel. That's why we, that's why Jesus needed to tear the veil. I, uh, I, re- I really, it makes me so sad that people actually flock to this, that there are thousands of people that enjoy listening to these teachings and they think that this is sound biblical teaching. It, it really, It shows, it's really rather frightening to me because I I think about my own self and how biblically illiterate I was for so long, for so many years and didn't even realize that I was so deceived. And I think about other people that think that they know, they know, and I'm still learning that that's the thing. I, I, I've not arrived. Nobody's ever going to arrive and there's never, I'm never going to know everything there is to know about the word of God and about God and, and, and understanding every single jot and tittle in scripture. But while I'm here on this earth, I want to, I want to understand his word and his way so I can glorify him and testify of Christ and, and, and not be blown around by every wind of doctrine that's, that Ephesians 4 talks about. And this is a wind of doctrine. This is, falls in the category of myths, as I said before, these myths that people chase after. It, it just makes me sad. It makes me sad that there are people being deceived by these things and they're not they're not not putting their trust in Christ and they're not really understanding the true freedom that Jesus paid the price for. That he paid for our sins. He he took the wrath of God on him. He didn't do it so that he could tear the veil so that we could time travel. They didn't do it so we could be the savior of our lives. He did it so he could he could be our Lord and Savior and that there would be no separation because of sin any longer to keep us apart from Christ, that we would have redemption, that we would have reckon, true reconciliation. I wish that was what was being taught in this broadcast that we're listening to, but unfortunately it's not. And they continue to go on talking about that this is not necessarily a new revelation, but it's just new language. You know, they talk about Jesus time traveled again, and they even talk about that there was time traveling that happened at his baptism, and that he tore a hole in the veil for the Holy Spirit to come. And she talks about um, Mary, and he talks about Mary, and that Mary also, he actually talks about Mary and focuses on the, the feast, the, the wedding feast, where Jesus does the first miracle in the Gospel of John that he turns the water into wine, and he says that Mary also understood how to time travel and how to access it. And notice, I want you to notice something in the entire thing, and I've got the links. I'm going to put the links just for educational purposes on this. But if you take time to listen, you're going to notice. I mean, they, she starts out talking about ectano and how, how valuable that word is and important that is to understand time travel. But then there's no mention of ectano any longer in all of this because you're not going to find this word mentioned for this in these passages they're talking about. All right. So as we keep going, we're going to hear them talk about 
um, attaining uh, other people and teaching on how to, for the people that are listening to that current broadcast, how they can ectano themselves by taking communion. In this new way, and the resurrection, in this new form right. is so important, okay. right? Like, I'll take, like, Matthew 27 and just listen to it over and over. I'll put it on my headphones at night and I'll move into that. I'll take communion before I go. Why do I take communion? Because communion is, we do it in remembrance of what he did on the cross. cross. Yes. And the cross ripped the veil right. from the top to the bottom. Right. I love how it says that it ripped it from the top to the bottom and the dead came out of their tombs. Yes, yeah, amazing, isn't it? Yeah, he went back in time for those yes, people that's right. and resurrected them that's from the right. dead. Okay. So as we just keep on meditating, at the very least, if you don't know what to do, take your communion because it's okay. doing it in remembrance of, of the cross, yep. right, and the resurrection. And then, like, meditate on stuff like Matthew 27 and Matthew 28, the yep. cross and the resurrection story. Lay into it and, and ask God to take to ectunnel you. Okay. Say, as I'm listening to this, take me back to the time something happened in my life that's causing me issues now, the place it happened, and the cause right that on. enabled it to happen. Just a reminder, in Acts 4, it says that Peter prayed for that. Right. He says, now Jesus... No, he didn't. The group did. And they didn't pray for that specifically. Stretch forth your hand, ectunnel your hand through us yes. to work signs, wonders, and miracles in the holy name of Jesus. Wow. So he was saying, do signs, wonders, and miracles by enabling us now to travel through time and space. Okay. It's also important to point out in Acts 4 that they wanted boldness to minister the word of God. They were not primarily focused on the miracle signs and wonders. Take note of that. Because at the end of it, after the place shook, they were filled with the Holy Spirit and they were empowered to actually minister the word with boldness. That seems to be missing from this talk here. It, that's interesting to me. So now we're going to listen to Katie pray. And I, I just want you to be prepared for this at the end. There is something that really, um, I can't tell you what it is just yet, but you'll hear it at the end. And I, I hope you catch it. But overall, I just want you to pay attention to what she's saying as far as this and that they're what they're and he also said stuff about the communion, about the the bread and stuff that I did not agree fully with what he was saying. But at any rate, we're going to listen to how she prayed and then we're going to move on and talk about scripture and be encouraged by the true word of God. So let's move into it and just okay. know that by by the power of the cross and the resurrection, that when we're taking communion, it is a, we do it in remembrance of what he did. And so now, Lord, we remember what you did through the taking in of your supper. We remember that you ripped the veil for us in the temple from the top to the bottom, from the eternal realm where all the reaches of space and time, the reaches of space and the ages of time are to this temple realm. So we have access now. We decree we have access. And when you did that on earth, the dead came out of their graves. So we decree that as we are celebrating what you did on the cross of the shedding of your blood through the communion, that we're going to be able to go back and defeat death in our lives. We're going to be able to go back to the time. Defeat? We will defeat? We will defeat death? We will defeat death. That's what, that's what she just said. We'll defeat death. Again, I'm not the Savior, and neither are you. And we can't do that. Christ has already done that. And that will be the last enemy to be destroyed at the end of time. And he's already taken care of all of that. It's finished. The place and the cause that any sickness, disease, or disorder came upon us and will come out of our tombs fully restored. Fully restored. And we decree that even... This sad to say, there's two things going on here, and I'm sorry for interrupting. There, there was not. Um, it seemed like that there was not an appropriate understanding of communion that was presented. Now she may have an understanding, but from this, that this is not the. I mean, we understand the body. We remember what Christ did for us on the cross, the sin that He took upon himself that was ours and the the penalty that he took, the wrath that he took upon himself, the body that was broken on our behalf, the blood that was spilled for our atonement. We remember that every time we take communion. We remember that we belong to Christ and we remember what he did for us. So there's that. And then there is this misunderstanding of the resurrection. It's almost like well, we believe in the resurrection power, i.e. that means my physical healing has to manifest now in this earth and I can never be sick ever again. I have to be completely whole now. 
that's not resurrection. This is talking about eternal life and glorification that Christ promised us because he was resurrected himself. And so he lives for it. He's already glorified. And so this is the eternal promise of what we get to look forward to as believers in Christ, that we will not have the second death. My, my, my. While we're taking this in remembrance of you, that we'll be doing exactly what you did when you were baptized at the Jordan. You went down and you went down the water that released the power of the cross. You came up out of the water that released the power of the resurrection. And you went three years into your own future and brought the power of the cross in the resurrection, a scheduled event that wasn't scheduled for three years into your now. So we believe that even as people are taking this, they're going to go into their future to a promise that wasn't be scheduled for years and bring it into their now. And we thank you that even like Philip, when he did the baptism, well, we'll be flung yes. through space and time, Holy even Spirit tonight, us. even now, while we take this. Yes. And we'll be ectonoed in Jesus' name. And now we take together. Mm. Mm. Amen. Mm. Amen. Yummy. Amen. Jesus is yummy. You know what you were. Did you catch that? Please tell me you caught that. Because I thought I heard things. I thought I was hearing things at the end of that when I listened to it. I had to go back and play it. Not to mention the fact of her talking about being propelled in the future like Philip and that Jesus went three years ahead to a scheduled event that was not supposed to be in the the now, I guess, or whatever, and pulled it in and just all that, that gobbledygook. And then to say what she said at the end, it made me cringe. Please tell me you heard that. Oh, please tell me you heard that, that I wasn't hearing things. At the same time, I don't want to hear what I just heard. Yeah, she said that Jesus was yummy. Makes me cringe. Okay. So as a side note, I I have done a podcast that you can listen to that may help some on another teaching that was disturbing about communion. So I'll leave the link for that below. It was quite a while back when I did that. And I also plan to look at baptism in the near future. No pun intended on that. I I always want to end with scripture because it just encourages us, especially after some of the things we've just heard. Now, we know that that God created time. He doesn't exist within time. He's eternal. That's one of his attributes, is that God is eternal, that he has no beginning and he has no end. And we can't comprehend that. We, we are trying to comprehend that as finite human beings, but we cannot comprehend that because we're human. We are the created beings. We are the lump of clay that the creator has made. And we also know that God appointed certain things to be done in his timing, in the time that he created. For example, we see in Romans chapter 5, verse 6, it says, For while we were still weak at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. God doesn't do things out of order, or it's it's not that there's something scheduled, but it's it's running late in time. That makes no sense whatsoever with Scripture. God is, is he does things in his time period. We see in Titus chapter 1, verses uh, 1 through 3, when Paul is talking to Titus, he introduces himself as a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ. For the sake of the faith of God's elect and their knowledge of the truth, which accords with godliness in hope of eternal life, which God, who never lies, promised before the ages began and at the proper time manifested in his word through the preaching with which I had been entrusted by the command of God, our Savior. Again, I mentioned a little bit ago about Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, and we also see in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 6, that Paul reminded Timothy, there is one God and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Jesus Christ, who gave himself as a ransom for all, which is the testimony given at the proper time. And that's based on God's understanding of time which he created and when he appointed things to happen. So the question is, um, can we go back and recreate memories? No. The answer to that question is no, we cannot go back and recreate memories, no matter how much both, how much you and I both would like to go back and have a redo on things. We'd ha- like to have a reset button, and we'd like to be able to go back and just redo everything. There is no way for us to do that. We can't rewrite our mistakes. We don't have that kind of control. We don't have that kind of ability. That's living in fantasy land. If you think that you can go back and recreate memories and that you can make it seem like you weren't, you really didn't sin as much or you really didn't do something that bad or you didn't, you weren't a good parent or you handled a, a situation the wrong way, you can't attain that away. That's not going to happen. And that's, again, that's not even what that word means, by the way. But you can't. I can't. That's just not possible. Once we lose that time, it's gone. 
There's no way to, to, to go back. We don't need new revelation and new language in adding to what Jesus Christ did. What he did is mind-blowing. It's It leaves, as a believer, it leaves me in awe. It leaves me in wonder. It leaves me in gratitude, in thanksgiving. It leaves me in praise to him. There's nothing else that's going to satisfy me but the, the truth that's testifying of him and, and Christ himself that satisfies me. All of this desire to control things, to go back in time and to have all this power and dominion, all of this stems from a desire to be like God. It's as old as the garden. It stems from a desire to possess attributes exclusive to God. And God is eternal and he's unconfined by time. We are bound within his creation by the time he created. And we can be comforted that the eternal God is with us. For those of us in Christ, we can be comforted and encouraged that he hears our prayers and he knows our needs. There's two verses that came to mind as I was pondering on this entire teaching and what would be encouraging as we part ways today. And two particular passages came to mind. Philippians 3, verse 12, Paul says, Not that I have already obtained this, which is the resurrection from the dead, or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus." Now, the things that laid behind Paul were things that he would have looked upon himself as 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 uh, meritorious, if you will, when before he knew Christ. But he he says in Philippians three that he considers them rubbish, which is dung. If you look at that in, in its proper understanding, he considered it that it, it was something to be discarded. It wasn't worth anything compared to knowing truly knowing Christ. And realizing he was new in Christ and that those things didn't matter. And 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17 is a passage that all of us know really well. It says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has is come. And this is going on to talk about the ministry of reconciliation and our hope in Christ. That is what our focus is to be on, not the next new thing, or even though this is a few years old, not the next new revelation or new language that's coming out If you, that they say, for you to have some other mystical understanding of who God is. You don't need to time travel. You don't need to redeem your time by claiming dominion because you can't. That would make you God. You need a Savior, and I need a Savior. And Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. He's the one that redeems us. He's the one that makes all things new. He's the one that causes us to be transformed from darkness to light. He's the one that rescues us, that redeems us out of the domain of darkness. And he brings us into the kingdom of God. Even though there are many of us that have things in our past, every one of us has things in our past history, or we had things in our family bloodline, for example, because we live in a fallen world that we deal with, we have to put our focus back on Christ. And stop trying to find all these solutions to our problems when the answers to our our, our woes and our fears and our problems are right before us in the pages of Scripture that testify and reveal God to us. And you need Christ. That's, that's who you need. I need Christ. I need Him every day. You need Him every day. We need to trust Him in every situation and every circumstance. And we don't need to time travel. So I hope you found this helpful today. And I hope that you will consider, if you have taken stock in some of these teachings, I hope that you will consider them and take them back to Scripture and test them, not because of what I'm saying, but because of what Scripture says. Be blessed today by this word. Thank you for joining me on this podcast. If you would like to connect with me, you can find me on Facebook and on Instagram at lovesickscribe. And if you enjoy reading, feel free to hop on over to lovesubscribe.com and subscribe to my blog. I've enjoyed being with you today, and I look forward to our next time together as we talk about biblical truths, current topics, and we continue to grow together in loving the Word and loving the one who is the Word, Jesus Christ. Blessings to you.